Hey, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I actually wanted to give you a little bit of a sneak peek at a page from the current Riverdale graphic novel that I'm working on. So recently, Archie released this one page as sort of a first look at this upcoming graphic novel. So I'm totally allowed to show you this page, but I actually wanted to take it a step further and uh, show you some of the process behind creating this page. So as some of you may know from watching some of my other videos, I work both traditionally and digitally. And when it comes to my comic book work, I work all digitally. A lot of that has to do with deadlines being as tight as they are and also the fact that I juggle a lot of different projects so it's just working digitally makes it a little bit more convenient. I don't think there's any right or wrong when it comes to working either traditionally or digitally as it relates to comic book work and illustration. All the same basic principles still apply. It's just a matter of preference, taste and sometimes time. So to be honest, before I started working on this graphic novel, I actually wanted to do the whole thing traditionally, meaning I would draw it on paper with pens and inks, the whole traditional way. But again, with deadlines being the way they are, I sort of realized that it's probably best that I stick with the digital approach for this. It just makes it more possible in terms of staying on deadline and making sure that um, the whole process is as streamlined as possible. I still wanted to incorporate some sort of traditional approach though on this particular graphic novel. So what I thought of was actually doing my layouts traditionally. There's really no reason that I would have to do my layouts digitally. So um, I actually started doing my layouts for this graphic novel all traditionally and um, it's been going really well so far. So anyway, before I start talking too much about this, let's head over to my drawing board and I'll show you the whole process from start to finish. Okay, so here's a quick look at those uh, layouts that I was mentioning. So pretty much, uh, I've just been doing them on sheets of typing paper. Really nothing fancy at all. Um, since they're just layouts, this is preliminary work. And I don't have to get too fancy with uh, the kind of paper that I'm using. So, like I said, I would love to show you all the pages so far, but um, that's right now I'm not allowed to do that. So, um, let's stick to this one particular page. Uh, this is an early page in the graphic novel and it's our first look at Jughead for this particular story and um, it's sort of just like Jughead at Pops on his laptop and it's supposed to be super rainy outside and uh, he's on the case as he usually is so what I did was I took this eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper I ruled it out so that it fits the proportions of the final page that I'm actually going to be working on so although this is on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, it's ruled out in the proper dimensions that the art has to be in order to uh, fit the printed size. So I put those guidelines on the sheet before I start drawing, just to make sure I know where the full bleed is, where um, the panel should be contained within, all that important stuff. If I were to just go straight onto the paper and start drawing, I would have to then squeeze things together just to make sure that they fit in the final uh, template size. So as you can see, I'm not really worried at all about detail or anything really looking good at this point. It's really so much more about placement, composition, and obviously storytelling. So this is, there's really not a lot going on on this page. It's more of a full page kind of composition than anything else. Uh, there's really only two panels. This one panel takes up the majority of the page. And, um, but still I wanted to make it as clear as possible and add all the proper dramatic lighting and all that kind of stuff. So um, at this stage, I felt like it was good to go in terms of layout. What I then did was I brought it into the computer and tightened up the layouts just a little bit more. So when I'm working digitally, and obviously I'm inking my own work, so my pencils aren't, um, they're not like tight pencils. So I pretty much do a rough layout and then I do a slightly tighter layout and then I ink on top of that. So my tighter layout is kind of like my pencils as well. When you're inking for yourself, um, it's really convenient because you know your own um, artistic language. You can kind of like fill in the gaps. If I were penciling for someone else to ink, my pencils would have to be much more detailed because um, I would have to explain to the inker exactly what I wanted. But when you're working for yourself, you really don't have to uh, 
you really don't have to do that. So it's kind of a, a time save in that in that regard. So let me show you what this looked like when I put it into the computer and tightened it up a little bit. So this is the digital version of that same layout. So pretty much all I did was let me show you right here. Actually, I just I have the I have that original underneath and then I just worked on top of that. And when the benefits of working digitally is that you can kind of move things around, you could take things out. So um, I pretty much just drew still roughly, but I drew on top of that uh, original traditional layout, uh, that particular scan. This is actually the version that I sent to my editors. So um, when I'm sending layouts to editors, I, I need to make sure that they're clear. So they don't have to be detailed. The editors trust that um, I'm going to render this stuff and detail it. They just want to make sure that the storytelling uh, is looking good, everything's clear, nothing's like being uh, falling off the edge of the page, important things like that. Um, but I like to have it uh, presentable and as clear as possible. So it's not stick figures and it's definitely not anything super tight, but it's somewhere in the middle. Once I get the approval on the layout, then I go ahead and start doing my version of pencils. And like I mentioned, I don't have to be super detailed with my pencils just because I know I'm the one who's going to be inking on top of them. So um, I'm working digital at this point and I just work in layers. And as you can see, I kind of just build things up and I do several iterations of things until I feel like I've gotten it right. Um, so with this particular pose, I really wanted to make Jughead feel like he's kind of hunched over and as you can see here I even tried a version where let me make this a little darker where his his head was actually looking up uh, and then I realized that wasn't working so I took that away and tried another version of that so um, layers are great for just making different iterations of the same drawing until you get it right um, I used to do that traditionally just with tracing paper, but um, working this way actually makes it a lot easier. Uh, so this is definitely a huge benefit to working digital is that you can, um, you can just kind of move things around and do a lot of trial and error until you get it right. And you don't have to uh, waste any paper <laughs> in the meantime. So um, let me show you what some of this stuff started to look like as it started to come together. Once I felt like I had that pose right, um, then I go in with my final outlines. So when I'm inking, I do a first round where it's just line work. Uh, here's the background on a separate layer. Um, I think I put, yeah, put the laptop on a different layer. Let me throw that in there. Um, so at this stage, everything is like, I've mentioned this before, but I kind of look at it like it's a coloring book. All the lines are just open. Nothing is filled in. There's no um, lighting. It's just outlines, essentially. But at this point, I feel comfortable usually adding in all those other elements because all the important line work, the proportions, um, everything is figured out. The perspective, everything is nice and clean and figured out. And now I have a really clean surface to essentially go in and have a lot of fun with. So this next step is really the fun part for me when it comes to inking. And um, I could show you here, that's on a separate layer. I added all the lighting, all the, the hair, the, just the different, some of the texture, all the elements that really bring the piece to life and make it look like it's not essentially a coloring book. Um, I throw in some white highlights in there. Uh, just to bring out certain areas like the hair for instance and then since this scene is like a really rainy um dark cloudy night i i did the um i did all the rain in the windows on separate layers so if you could see here um and i just when i was working on this i just zoned out <laughs> Um, I have the hint of some cars in the background, but you know, I, I referenced a lot of what like windows look like when it's raining at night and have some of that reflective light from some of the action that might be happening outside the window. Um, but this was actually a lot of fun and Andre in the colors, I'll show you what the colors look like, but, um, he really brought that to life in a really beautiful way. So, um, that was really cool to see. And, um, yeah, this is the smaller panel. The inset panel over there but that's pretty much how the page came together um, as far as layouts and inks go 
And um, let me show you the final inks, uh, sorry, the final colors. So this is the page that Archie released uh, recently. And um, like I said, I really love what Andre did with uh, the colors. Um, his name is Andre Seismanowitz. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, but like I mentioned earlier, we actually worked together on uh, the Riverdale monthly book for years actually. So it was really cool to be able to work together again on this graphic novel. And um, we're both really trying to push ourselves and make this like super moody and kind of match a little bit more of the tone of the show itself, but then also add something unique that only we can bring to it. So I feel like so far we're really accomplishing that and I'm really excited with how this whole thing is coming together. Um, like I said, I'm still working on it, and uh, as the pages keep coming in, uh, it's looking better and better. So I really can't wait for you all to see this book. Um, if you're a Riverdale fan, a fan of the show and a fan of the comics, I think you're really going to dig it. And um, if you're not, this would be a really great place to start. So um, yeah, this was a little first look at some of the art. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that little behind the scenes look at the process behind this page. Once again, I'll leave a link down below if you wanna read a little bit more about this upcoming graphic novel. It comes out in the fall. Anyway, thanks so much for watching this video. As always, if you have any questions or comments, leave those down below. Make sure to hit the like button, and if you like this kind of content, definitely subscribe to my channel. I try to make as regular videos as possible, usually at least one a week, um, and hopefully over time, I'll be able to increase the amount of videos that I put out. So uh, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.